did members of the Genovese crime family trick Jewish hitman Harold Konigsberg into participating in the murder of Joseph Barbato? Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the murder of Joseph Barbato, a hit carried out by members of the Genovese crime family and notorious hitman Harold K.O. Konigsberg. On November the 12th, 1958, the body of professional thief Joseph Barbato was found shot to death in a stolen car behind Ray's Diner on Fishbone Road in New Jersey. As one newspaper reported, Victim of a one-way ride, a notorious safecracker was found shot dead shortly before last midnight in the Erie Meadowlands of Kearney, New Jersey, adjacent to the Hackensack River and bordering Jersey City. He was Joseph E. Barbato, 26, of 742 Avenue A, Bayonne, too well known by the cops and sought by them for questioning even as he was murdered. Barbato, said police, was killed soon after work and apparently by two confederates. When found, he wore white gloves. White gloves are the trademark of safe crackers. The article added, Brazingly, the Slayers had elected to murder their man only 200 yards from Hudson County Police Headquarters. Nevertheless, nobody at headquarters heard the death shot. Barbato's body was found slumped on the passenger side of the car's front seat. The bullet which killed him had penetrated his left cheek at close range and gone through the skull. In the back seat of the car was the shell ejected by the death gun. The weapon was not found. Joseph Barbato, the murdered man, was well known to the police. And five days after his death, the authorities arrested their prime suspect in the shooting. The feared Jewish hitman, Harold K.O. Konigsberg. Konigsberg was a mobster who was close with Bonanno crime family powerhouse Joseph Ziccarelli. But Konigsberg was also closely associated with members of the Genovese crime family, specifically with mobsters in the infamous Greenwich Village crew. FBI files state that Konigsberg was often in attendance with that Genovese crew when they were discussing and planning hits. For example, the murder of the greatly feared Johnny Earl and the hit on John Scanlon. Two killings I've covered in previous videos. In 1960, Harold Konigsberg was indicted for the Joseph Barbato murder, along with three other men. The Daily News reported, Four men were indicted on murder charges yesterday in Jersey City, in the gangstyle slaying of Joseph Barbato, 26, on November 12, 1958. One of the defendants is Louis Ferrini, 28, formerly of Lodi, New Jersey, now serving a four to nine year sentence in Connecticut for larceny. Also indicted were Harold Konigsberg, 32, of 506 Avenue A, Bayonne, New Jersey, Frank Romeo, 35, of 15 West 23rd Street, Bayonne, and John E. Findlay, 56, of Brooklyn. However, the following year in 1961, Konigsberg and Frank Romeo were acquitted of the Barbato murder, even after one of their original co-defendants, Louis Ferrini, became a cooperating witness and testified against them. So, what did happen to Joseph Barbato, and how were members of the Genovese crime family involved? In the mid-1960s, Harold K.O. Konigsberg became an informant and provided the FBI with the information on many Cosa Nostra members and murders that had occurred. At the time, Konigsberg was in prison, serving a 10-year federal sentence for possession of goods stolen in interstate transit. Konigsberg would tell the FBI that a Genovese crime family mobster by the name of Armand Koki Falgno approached Konigsberg and told him that Joseph Barbato was planning to set Konigsberg up and have him shot to death by the police. The FBI file reads, Harold Konigsberg furnished the following information concerning the murder of Joseph Barbato. 
Konigsberg stated that he was advised by Armand Koki Falgno that he had received information that Barbato was going to set up Konigsberg for a burglary so that Danny Patron of the Bayonne Police Department could kill Konigsberg during the burglary. Konigsberg stated that he told Koki that the information was not true as he did not know either Barbato or Patron. As can be seen, Konigsberg initially dismissed Falgno's information as he stated he did not know either Joseph Barbato or Danny Patron, the police officer who Falgno alleged was going to kill him. Konigsberg then goes on to tell the FBI that a short time later, Joseph Barbato approached him to borrow money. At the time, Konigsberg was, amongst other things, a big-time loan shark. The FBI file reads, Konigsberg stated that about two weeks later, Joseph Barbato came around to borrow $240 from him, which money was paid back by Barbato. Barbato then began telling Konigsberg of a big score to be made in the burglary. Konigsberg and Larry Dentico decided to tell Barbato that they would go on the burglary, but they knew they would kill Barbato instead. It now appears that after Joseph Barbato, who Konigsberg had not known before, had approached him to borrow money and then tried to entice him into a burglary, Harold Konigsberg started to believe Armand Falkno's earlier claims of a setup. Konigsberg, along with Larry Dentico, decided to kill Barbato. Larry Dentico was Lawrence Little Larry Dentico, a Genovese soldier in the Greenwich Village crew. According to the information that Konigsberg provided the FBI, the Joseph Barbato murder went as follows. They all agreed to meet at Koki's house. Koki then went out and stole an Oldsmobile, which he parked at his house, took off the license plates and substituted other plates for them. As they drove to the burglary, Harold Konigsberg and Barbato were in the front and Larry Dentico was in the back seat. They were followed in another car by Koki. Konigsberg stated that Larry held a gun up to Barbato's head and killed him, so that there was blood all over the car and all over them. They parked the car and walked over to the car which Koki had been driving and went to Koki's house to change clothes. They put all their clothes into a bag, which they threw into the Hudson River from the Manhattan Bridge, New York City, as they were on their way to Konigsberg's house on Reason Street, Brooklyn, New York. Konigsberg then changed into his own clothes and they went to the corner of Prince and Sullivan Streets in Manhattan in Koki's car. The information that Konigsberg provided the FBI regarding Joseph Barbato's murder raises a few questions. If Armand Falgno's information on Barbato was true, then did Joseph Barbato indeed promise law enforcement he would set up the notorious Konigsberg to be killed by police? Or did Genovese mobsters Larry Dentico and Armand Falgno want Joseph Barbato killed for their own reasons? and concocted the story so they had a legitimate excuse to murder him and enlisted Konigsberg as an accomplice under false pretenses. At the time of Joseph Barbato's killing, the media speculated that Barbato was talking to the police and perhaps Dentico and Falgno wanted him silenced. Again, this is just speculation and I welcome your thoughts in the comments below. New Jersey-based Genovese mobster Armand Koki Falgno would be murdered himself years later. His body was never found. There are rumours that his corpse was put through a wood chipper. Larry Dentico, as mentioned, was a member of the Genovese crime family's Greenwich Village crew and he would go on to rise through the ranks and at one point would serve as conciliary of the family. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.